Are the newest lash serums on the market safe for your eyes? Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist, managing partner and practice owner here at Honolulu Eye Clinic where I've been practicing for almost 17 years in Oahu. On this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, eye makeup health, and a little bit about my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit that like, subscribe button so you can follow along. All right, I did a lash serum video a couple of years ago, maybe about three or four years ago. A whole bunch of new lash serums out on the market. I get constant requests to review the ingredients to assess if they are safe. Just so you remember, anything with a prostaglandin analog is going to have some of the potential side effects that you don't want in your eyes. Number one, changing your eye color. If you have hazel or green eyes, it may darken your eye color. Second, it can cause darkening around your eyes as well. That's something that a lot of people absolutely do not want. Third, it can actually cause atrophy. So it can cause thinning of the fat around your eyes. So it can make your eyes look even more sunken than they already do. These are some of the dangers of lash serums which contain prostaglandin analogs. Famous ones are Latisse, which is FDA approved to uh, grow lashes. Everything else on the market is not FDA approved for that reason. Other types of lash serums which have prostaglandin type analogs, Lash Boost, Bronde Lash, and a whole list. I will link to the video where I talk about all of those. But today we're talking about a whole new crop of lash serums because they're around and always have to stay vigilant as to what is safe to put on your eyes. Sometimes it's incorporated in mascara, so it can be really difficult to know what is safe and what's going to possibly give you eye redness and eye irritation, another thing that happens with prostaglandin analogs. So let's dive in. First up is Olaplex Lash Bond Building Serum. It's got a bunch of ingredients. You can read them here. The key ingredient is an antioxidant, which is oat kernel extract. Then there is a couple of what they call cell to cell communication ingredients. And then things that are just to plump it up, glycerin and sodium hyaluronate. That's what's in fillers. That's in a lot of like moisturizers. It gives you some plumpness. So that's always good. It's just gonna moisturize your lashes, not gonna harm them. And then there's ingredients that soothe the lashes. Panthenol, Avena Sativa. In Olaplex, there is absolutely nothing that is a prostaglandin analog. So you can feel pretty safe that this isn't going to cause some of those really dreaded complications that I mentioned before. Biotin and Panthenol, which this does have, are vitamins that are used for hair and skin health, but they really have no relationship to prostaglandins. And as I mentioned, the sodium hyaluronate are as a skin hydrating and soothing agent. So that's just gonna kind of plump up your lashes and just hydrate them, make them appear thicker because there's water surrounding them. One of the ingredients you might be concerned about is Miristoil Pentapeptide 4. That's a synthetic peptide that's commonly found in a lot of cosmetic and facial products. It's supposed to stimulate collagen production and it's supposed to decrease fine wrinkles when it's used on the skin and enhance skin elasticity. But for the lashes, that's not all that important. It just might help deliver some of the other ingredients, making them more lipid soluble or fat soluble, but in and of itself, it probably doesn't do too much for the lashes themselves. So this particular lash serum is just full of a lot of things which seem to coat and nourish uh, vitamins, peptides, but nothing that I would be really concerned about. Next up is X-Lash Lash Serum. The key ingredients are biotin, remember that one, hyaluronic acid, yep, same thing, and rosemary extract. You know, there is some soft data about rosemary and hair growth. They have not been replicated in eyelashes, so a lot of different lash serums, natural lash serums, will have rosemary oil. Can't say exactly if it's going to grow the lashes, but for the most part, it's not going to harm you. They should be in concentrations which are not dangerous to the eye, but I would be careful if you feel like you have a sensitivity to it or your eyes start stinging after you use it, please stop using it. However, in X-Lash, the very last ingredient, difluoroethylchloprestinolamide. What is that? Well, that's basically the same thing as isopropyl chloprestinate, which is what is in Lash Boost, Bronde Lash, and that is a prostaglandin analog. So for a bunch of reasons, I personally would not use X-Lash Serum unless you are really just aware of the fact that 
you may have some of those dreaded eye complications, the orbital fat atrophy, the skin darkening around the eyes, and even the eye color change. This is one that does have a prostaglandin analog. And next up is Lash Therapy Australia. I've gotten a lot of requests about this particular lash serum. I didn't really know about it until I started investigating, but here you go. Its main ingredients are aqua, hyaluronic acid, uh, pumpkin seed extract. You'll notice a lot of nut seed ash extracts. We saw some oat extract before. Now it's pumpkin seed extract. I don't know. I think just with the peptides and the proteins, but again, no real hard data that's going to cause lash growth per se. Collagen, biotin, again, same kind of ingredients that we've seen before. And then miristoyl pentapeptide 17, as well as arginine. So that one ingredient that we saw earlier with the Olaplex, the synthetic peptide that's commonly used for skincare and cosmetic lines. It's basically a bunch of fatty acids to a peptide. So I think it's just really going to just nourish the lash itself. It should not cause any actual lash growth or those complications we're worried about. Grande Lash. You heard me allude to Grande Lash MD before. I don't know what the MD stands for. If it's supposed to be medical doctor, is this medical doctor approved? Certainly not approved by me, an ophthalmologist. Grande Lash has a bunch of different ingredients, very long list of same, aqua, panthenol, glycerin, sodium citrate, all sorts of things, ginseng root, uh, sodium hyaluronate. The thing that is buried in there is the isopropyl chloprestinate. So it's really not the grapeseed extract or the amino acids that causes Grande Lash to work. It is the isopropyl chloprestinate. Again, that is a prostaglandin analog and it has with it the complications that most of us just want to avoid. All right, what about the ordinary multi-peptide lash and brow serum? Starts out the same, aqua, glycerin, butylene glycol. Oh, there's that miristoyl pentapeptide 17. It's got the arginine glycine. You'll find a lot of these lash serums have very similar things. That miristoyl pentapeptide and the biotin oil just is supposed to promote lash strength. Basically just means it's nourishing it, which is not a bad thing. This one has caffeine. So the thought is that it's going to stimulate the blood flow to the lash area causing it to grow. Again, no studies that have shown that that actually works. Panthenol for conditioning. Remember your good old Pantene hair conditioner? I used to use that all the time. So Panthenol is in there just as it's been in a few others. Some flower extract, leaf extract for antioxidants, but no prostaglandin analog. So you're safe with this one. Just a few more. Dime Beauty Eyelash Boost Serum. We look at it, same thing, water, glycerin, it's got a tripeptide and that same miristoyl pentapeptide 4. So this is supposed to be strengthening and conditioning the lashes. You're going to find that in a lot of the more natural lash serums is this uh, particular pentapeptide, the miristoyl. Amino acids, hyaluronic acid, panthenol, again, for the conditioning, aloe vera, and this one has apple fruit extracts. You see a lot of nut or fruit extracts in these lash serums. And once again, it appears to be prostaglandin free. I am just looking at the ingredient lists I was able to find online. If you find out otherwise, please let me know. At first glance, as I looked at it, I could not find a prostaglandin analog in Dime. So I think you're safe with this one. Velour Beauty Lash Serum has peptides, ginseng root complex, amino acids, hyaluronic acid, radish, which I thought was very interesting. And again, has the Miristoil pentapeptide for it. They love this stuff. Uh, the amino acids, the hyaluronic acid for the hydration, the panthenol for the lash conditioning, a lot of stuff there, but no prostaglandin analog that I could find. So this one also appears to be prostaglandin free. My last one is Lily lashes. Key ingredients seem to be the biotin and the peptides as well as the antioxidants. I am not against those. I don't hate that. It also has the Maristoil pentapeptide 17. That's pretty much in almost every single lash serum we went through today. It has the biotin for supporting the natural lash health, the panthenol as well for the lash hydration and conditioning. We're going to see these things over and over, the amino acids, grapeseed extract. Before we saw apple extract, this one's got grapeseed extract, but no prostaglandin. The only ones on my list that did have a prostaglandin that I reviewed today, Grande Lash MD and X-Lash Lash Serum. Those two, if you are looking for a prostaglandin-free lash serum, you should avoid. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful just to break down some popular lash serums. If you have any other questions, please drop them in the comments below. And of course, sign up for our newsletter. I send out little tidbits and cosmetic updates in the newsletter as well. It might not 
require an entire video on it, but I will do a Q&A on my, all my social media channels so that I can put them in the newsletter. So sign up for the newsletter. I'll put that link below. And if you've got ideas for other videos, I am always looking for them. So drop those in the comments below as well. If you have used any of these lash serums, I would love to hear from you. So let us know, let people know in this community what has been safe for you and what's had good results. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.